Why buy just a video game from Atari or any television? Invest in the wonder computer of the 1980s for under $300. The Commodore in January 1982, the Commodore 64 personal computer was introduced with a 64... Commodore. A name from the past, a name of a company that is iconic in the rise of the personal computer. There's not many people in the age bracket of 35 to 45 that may not have at one time owned one of these Commodore machines. The VIC-20, the Commodore 64, even the old PET. Later the uh, Commodore 128 or the Amiga line, revolutionary in and of their own. Well here it is, 2011, and Commodore is back with the new VIX Slim. This is the low end of their current model line. They have a Commodore 64X and there's a forthcoming Amiga line for high performance gaming and workstation class machines. But this is the VIX Slim, the low end, and I'm going to give you a good look at it and let you see it running. This is the actual computer, the entire thing in a keyboard. I'm going to put my hands in to give you a good sense of scale. You can see it's quite slim, hence the name slim. Sleek, stylish. The first word out of at least three people's mouths when they saw it was sexy. And I think I agree with that. For I.O. on the sides we have the speaker. Three USB ports across the back. One, two, and three. An Ethernet jack. A serial port. And under a little screw-in door, see if I can get this so you can see it, we have the VGA port for video for your monitor. Another USB port where you could hook a mouse up. And the reason that that's tucked in there and this door is here is that they're thinking that this will be a, an ideal machine for classrooms and uh, offices as a space saver PC. So you can hook this, your monitor and your mouse up, screw this shut, and it makes it a little more difficult for people to just pick it up and walk away with it. Next to that is the power connector. And on this side, we have the power switch, audio out, audio in, headphones and microphones, and another USB port. On the bottom, there's a RAM access door. It takes a single DDR3 SODIMM up to 2 gig of memory. Over here is your hard drive access door for a standard laptop size uh, SATA uh, hard disk. That's the whole machine. Oh yes, back here in the middle there's an air vent right there. I'll turn it over so the light will get to it. Can't quite see it. There's an air vent right here for a single internal uh, fan that runs quite quietly. So that's the whole machine right there. It comes with a Commodore branded USB mouse and a power brick. Rather small, 19 volts at uh, 2.1 amps. The machine is slated to use about 17 watts uh, during regular use, maybe a little less when it's idle. It's a very low power machine. You could leave it on most of the time, I suppose. Okay, well that's basically the hardware. I'm going to hook it all up and uh, do a little screen recording and uh, show you uh, some software. Show you the speed of the machine. It's surprising the performance that you get. I should mention the uh, specs. It's a newer 64-bit dual-core Atom processor. Uh, Hyper-threaded, so to the OS it looks like four CPUs and uh, fairly standard Intel um, chipset motherboard. They say on the box it's compatible with Windows. If you want to install Windows on it, you certainly can. And I understand that it runs quite well. Um, the forthcoming Commodore OS <coughs> excuse me, will be uh, based on Linux. Um, it's in beta testing right now and will be shipping on the machines um, before too long and available to the public, probably before the end of the year. Uh, I'm running uh, Ubuntu 10.10 .10 on this particular unit. Um, Linux performs exceedingly well on this machine and is uh, it's quite powerful, quite useful. The other thing I should mention is the uh, 
Commodore OS being based on Linux will come preloaded with uh, all the best of the open source software world. You'll be able to do more out of the box with a Commodore machine than with any other computer on the planet and I'll, uh, I'll show you some of that uh, here in a moment. So let's get her hooked up. Okay, so here we have the VicSlim hooked up, operating, running Ubuntu. What I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to zoom the camera in on the screen so you won't see my hand on the keyboard or moving the mouse around. You'll get a better view of the screen. And I will be um, running a screen recorder and I will edit in direct video um, from the screen recorder to uh, make things a little bit cleaner and easier for you to see. But uh, it's a standard desktop. And now I'll pause for a moment while I, uh, I zoom the camera in. Okay, that should give you a pretty good view of the desktop. I might uh, switch to the screen recorder. There's a small white line visible around the edges that's uh, indicating to me that the screen recorder is running and, and under Linux and recording my desktop to a movie. So, this is the Ubuntu desktop. I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that. Anybody running uh, uh, Linux is familiar with it. For those of you Windows folk, it's a fairly standard computer desktop. You've got uh, your icons on your desktop and menus where you can select programs you want to open or run. For example, I'll go up here to Internet and I've got Google Chrome. Firefox comes pre-installed, but I prefer Chrome. We'll open that up. As you can see, it's uh, it's fairly snappy. Go up here and browse the web. <laughs> I'm on an Amigo demo site there. I was downloading some demos for another part of this <laughs> demonstration. So, uh, there you go. Browsing the web. As you'd expect in Chrome. Nice and smooth. What else do you do with a computer? Well, uh, you do email. No problem there. Your email client built in. What about real work? Well, I've gone out and I have found some uh, sample files here. We've got a Word document. Students doing homework or people uh, writing will be familiar with that. I'm going to open that. Now, obviously this is not Windows, so Microsoft Office is not installed. But uh, one common Office suite that comes with most Linux installations is OpenOffice. Later uh, versions of uh, the operating systems you'll get uh, LibreOffice, which is probably what will ship with the Commodore OS. As you can see, the Word document opened just fine scroll around in there and I could uh, type and it keeps up with me just fine. So I'll leave that open. Move it off here to the side. I've got an Excel spreadsheet. Let's open that. And there we go. Our Excel spreadsheet. One of the sample sheets off Microsoft.com opens and operates just fine without spending money for Microsoft Office or Windows, I should point out. So we'll leave that open too. I'm going to load the machine up and really give you a, an example of performance under load. We have here a Photoshop file, a 10 megabyte uh, Photoshop file. I'm going to open that and the GIMP is a Photoshop-like program that comes standard with your Linux installation and it will open the Photoshop multi-layer file just fine as you'll see. And you might notice that uh, the machine's operating rather quickly for such a small machine. There we go, there's our Photoshop file. Multiple layers. You can turn layers on and off. Work with the layers, all your standard image editing tools over here and filters and such. Uh, let's see, let's uh, Let's try a filter just to show you how fast it is. Good old Gaussian blur. I don't know what section of the image I'm operating on though. Well, let's see. There goes our filter. Ah, one of the layers I've hidden apparently, but you saw that it happened quite quickly. The machine's running rather well, rather smoothly. I'm going to show you something. Commodore enthusiasts like to play around with the old machines or the old software. Emulation will be part of the Commodore OS for the Commodore 64 and Amiga. And I've gone ahead and installed two emulators. I'm going to show them to you here. Over on this desktop we have an Amiga emulator here. 
EUAE running an Anarchy demo. You can see I can click in it and uh, make things happen. I've turned the sound down because it's uh, kind of annoying when you've got a Commodore 64 and Amiga both running at the same time. As you can see here, this demo wants the second disc. Let me throw it on there real quick. Okay, there we go. So we've got an Amiga emulated and a Commodore 64 emulated, both running, along with all of this that I've got going, a Word document, an Excel document. There's our Word document, there's our Excel spreadsheet, there's our, uh, our big Photoshop file. Everything running smoothly. Go over here to Chrome. Click on a story on CNN. You'll see that it's still running smoothly. And that's when we've still got two other emulated computers. Uh, that's interesting, isn't it? Running. This machine has 2 gig of RAM. And if I open the uh, system monitor here, We'll see how heavy we're hitting it. With all of that going on, all of that software running, plus a screen recorder, video playing on CNN, everything is smooth. Our CPUs, as you can see, four simulated cores with two cores and two threads each. They're working pretty hard. We're, we're up in the 70% total range, 80%. But we're only using 1.1 gig of our 2 gig of memory. With all of this running, that shows you the efficiency of Linux right there. Look at that. So as you can see, it's uh, it's quite a capable little machine for the size. A lot of bang for the buck. Check out CommodoreUSA.net if you want to learn more about their machines. And uh, happy computing. Thank you.